as I said last time, um, today's meeting actually is mostly about, um, or mainly about cocoa in Ghana. And uh, we want to know from you some of the challenges you face. We want to hear some of the questions from you. What are the problems? And uh, first of all, we would like you to introduce yourself. Very shortly. If I know some, uh, 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 throat is passing. I let it pass, then we can talk. Because yeah, we, we want. Here, yes. We want you to introduce your yourself. Yes. Very short. So I, I am. I'll start with myself. I am Joseph Taplin. I was initially black and white in Ghana. I have two farmers here from. The Brown Hafu region. I've been seen one of the towns close to Sonyanini. Uh, the name is Abisim. I have on my left, uh, Mr. Samuel Asiedu Amponsa, the farmer. Then on my right, we have Mr. Richard Anini Aji. Yes. He's so I have the two of them with with me. He's also a cocoa farmer. Oh, yeah, we are also yeah, cocoa farmers. All yes, right. we are both cocoa farmers. All right. So we would like you to, uh, we would like to introduce our experts and then we move on. Can you just shut the door? Okay. Um, I'm Friedrich Adams. I work for a small NGO here in Germany and I focus on uh, cocoa since a couple of years and I had the pleasure a couple of times that I visited cocoa farms and conferences in Ghana. And we are focusing on uh, pressuring the industry to pay a better price for cocoa and uh, to be responsible for a really a living income for farmers that they get an income where they can live on. And, uh, so we are involved in writing studies, uh, in running campaigns, and in lobbying. We are listening. Go on. Now I'm more or less finished because um, there are more people here in the room, um, and um, what what we are hoping okay. for is a discussion about first how you see problems, where could be solutions, and what we should do here in, uh, in, 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 in Germany to change the situation of cocoa farmers. All right, sir. That's the situation uh, just help cocoa farmers in Germany to improve their situation. That is uh, their lot. Okay, sir. So, should I go ahead and give your contribution? Yeah, uh, Joseph, let me just come in shortly. Before. Uh, the background is... The background is, as you may know, mostly cocoa is produced in Ghana or Cote d'Ivoire mainly. And we do not consume the outcome of cocoa in, in, the, in the form of chocolate and so on. Mostly it's sent to Europe and Germany. Germany, for example, is one of the highest consumers when it comes to chocolate, the outcome of cocoa. So what we want to know from you generally, as he has already said, uh, countries like Germany has a big influence as to how much, for example, cocoa farmers earn to be able to feed their family. The same for many other developed countries. So, the question is actually, you telling some of the challenges you face and how can a country like Germany contribute to solve those problems, for example? Okay, okay. Okay, Mr. Mr. In the first place, in the first place, the farmers can get uh, the farming push. And then labor. Almost all the farmers are very old. Uh, the young ones are not going to farming. Or rather, uh, going to hard color jobs. They have to have hard color jobs. So, eventually, uh, 
uh, the, the old farmers can actually work on the on the farm properly. So that is one problem. And, and also, uh, the inside time for the spring, I'll give you not in due time for the cocoa farmers. Sometimes uh, it may come to, uh, 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 to be expired before they give it to the farmers. farmers. Yeah. So this is a big problem. For example, recently about uh, one month ago, was some fertilizers, uh, which were in a shed of some companies. Who did that? The company was a farmer shop. Yeah, farmer shop. Farmers. The farmers couldn't buy, and the government uh, tried to give the fertilizer free to the farmers. But look at this, that this in, we are in the dry, how can we use the fertilizer? And then they, that they gave the fertilizer to us. The expiring date was uh, just two weeks. Two weeks is the expiring date. To the expiring. So we, we have some challenges, big, big challenges. Because you know, every developer country is part of hard working. And now, what we are facing here in Ghana is uh, fast money making, fast money making. We cannot help Ghana. And look, if you look at me myself, uh, I'm old, I'm 61 years. And it's sometimes it is hard to win or to use use a spray machine. And now we are uh, we have free education, uh, so that every uh, child should be educated. But who is going to uh, win on the if all of us become graduates? This is what is happening over here. So a time will come here, all, all these young ones will be educated, as my brother is saying. So we, the old ones, can, we, 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 we can work on the farms. Here, as a sister, I'm 75. I'll be 75 this year, but I'm still working on, on the farm. So it will be difficult for us to do it, continue doing it. So we need a help from the, the young ones. And the young ones they be educated, they wouldn't like to go to the farms. So this is really this should be the problems. <laughs> okay. Um we are talking about farming boots. Farming boots is like a insecticide, what do you what do you call it? Uh, pesticide. Uh, pesticide. Yeah. They come very late. And even uh uh it it went to us in the in small, small quantities, in tots, at least uh, the two farmers will take one liter for, for uh, 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 an acre about uh, five acres. And which is not enough for the good farmer. farmer. And our income also, oh, the, the rich and poor in Ghana here, is very huge. So that we, we don't have rich and poor in Ghana here, it's very huge. So that we look, uh, we are. Uh, Low income people, uh, we cannot provide uh, that to the farmers. We cannot provide it so that every always be, become poor and poorer. That, that's what is happening over here. Okay, um, let us <laughs> let us deal with the issue. Okay, okay, you go on. Please go on. And we are talking about the price of cocoa. It, it is low. So we, 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 we want when it is up, uh, we, we, may, uh, we may be able to engage, engage some, some young ones. And also, let me add this one. Okay, when they used to buy the cocoa from the family, it's adjusted. So uh, the, the, the buyer becomes richer. Farmer become okay. poorer. This is what, uh, what is happening over here in Ghana. So, if we can be able to get a skill that will, uh, the, for the farmers, that will help us. That will not be adjustable. Yeah. That is very, very, very important because they can adjust it to about 10, five, five to 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, only those who are buying the cocoa are making something out of the cocoa farm. 
Okay. They are, what, what they are talking about is scale is the scale that the uh, cocoa buyers, the companies used to buy, they kind of fix it such like that it gives a low reading of the actual quantity of beans yeah. that are being purchased. Yeah. So they end up even swindling them, giving them less for, for what they are supposed to and they take more of the beans and pay less for it. Okay. Okay. Um let uh Joseph Yes. Yeah, we would like to deal with that. some of the issues they've raised one by one and then they will come in again later. Okay. Yeah. They raise a number of issues you okay. you've already talked about them. Uh talking yeah, about the, the age of cocoa farmers. Mm -hmm. That mostly they are as we can already see uh the farmers that they got one is 61 years one is almost 75 years meanwhile we know the average age in ghana i, I think about 60 percent are younger than 20 years so we we can see already the age is a problem that younger people don't want to go into farming mm -hmm. this is one of them the second thing they complain about the pesticides i mean the government as you said uh, claims that it's helping the local people with pesticide, also with fertilizer, especially. By the end, they are saying that it comes late, and some actually expires before they give it to them. So it's not useful. One of the problems that they raise, which is very interesting, is the issue of charge. Uh, I mean, sending everybody to school. I mean, the free education actually for them, for the cocoa farmers. It's, it's, it's a negative thing because uh, they don't have enough children to work in their farms even though the government wants a free education for everybody so those are the main issues and uh, they want the cocoa price to increase because the buyers earn more than the, the farmers that's what they are saying do you have anything to say generally to them well Most of the problems you, you mentioned are around uh, the income. Also that the young people don't want to work in cocoa anymore. Uh, don't you see a possibility that with a higher cocoa price, uh, cocoa production would become attractive again so that young people come back to farms and try to, to, um, yeah, to earn a good income by farming? Or do do you do or do you think that they are gone into the towns and never come 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 back? Do, do you think there is a possibility for for a young generation uh, with a cocoa price which makes it so attractive that people want to grow cocoa again? Joseph, did you hear the question? And the next one, please. Yeah, yeah, repeat it. We didn't get the word. Okay, let me repeat the question. Uh, he's asking you a question. Okay. For example, if cocoa price uh -huh. is more attractive today, um, you get more from the cocoa. I mean, farming. Uh, do you see the possibility of young people coming back from the cities and engage in farming, or you think even if cocoa prices yes. increase, they will not come back? <laughs> And the young ones who come to the field when they go go, prices increase, and then there are incentives. Uh, Spray machines are not even available. Like even when we are given the uh, the pesticide, we can't build the farm because of lack of machines. We can't get the spring machines. The, the, the farmers don't have money to buy. The government, the government is not providing enough uh, spray machines. The, you know, let me add this one. Before a young man can come to the cocoa farm, he may compare the uh, salary he gave every month to this cocoa farmer. If it is less, he will never come. And he may try to prefer to go and do the same than to go to the cocoa farm. Because we are not getting anything in the cocoa uh, farming. We are always cheated, cheated, and we are growing old and old, everything, and we are dying because of lack of uh, nutrition and a lack of health uh, facilities and uh, other things. Because it is very important. Now, what is very, very important is that 
the government should encourage the cocoa farmers and give them two uh, what they need so that they should uh, other children to enter the cocoa farm. Otherwise, cocoa production will go down, I think, by five to ten years. Ghana will lose cocoa, many cocoa uh, abroad. Yeah, Emmanuel, just to add this, I, I think the point they are making is that because it's not attractive, then you don't have any young people wanting to come in. It is not only peasant farmers. We have people who want, wish to go into cocoa farming. They might be educated, they might make investments, but they fear to make investments in cocoa because the price is not good. And then they implement that they need are difficult, are, are very expensive. And then when even they get to get assistance from um, government, come early. And so it's not attractive for people to want to even abandon whatever jobs they are doing and invest into cocoa farming. So does it mean that the question again, even if some things are changed now to make it attractive, young people will still not come until it is really good for them to. Emmanuel, the point is that when when the price is made attractive, yeah, then you would have a lot of people even coming on board. Not even young alone, but you will have others who want to invest in it because they know they can gain from it. Now, what people are doing is just buying and selling in Ghana trading. Okay, because um, so we, are, we think that if the price is made attractive, then it's going to attract even other people outside the peasant farmers who want to invest in cocoa farming. Okay. To be attractive. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you do you think that things in the cocoa bot that things improved now with the new leadership, or are they do they still have all this uh, corruption problem in the cocoa bot? And that things are not reaching farmers because they always promise to give you seedlings and fertilizers and pesticides. And for what I have heard in my last visit last year was that things are never reaching farmers. Is it still a major problem or are things improving now? It is still a major problem. It's a major problem. Because before they, we get the uh, cocoa seeds, it is too late, it is too late. There's no reason to plant it. In by two months or three months, uh, next year, they will, they will die off and you start to come, uh, plant it again. So it's not easy over here. Not easy at all. Mm -hmm. They don't give it, uh, uh, they don't give it on time. Uh, because of the real battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, some person has got a spider and then they distributed it to, 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 to farmers. But why did I, uh, there was no, there, there were no rains. So, I do apply it. The letter was there and they kept it to that dying moment. They kept it and was not able to give out to them during the rainy season. And what, 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 uh, when you give it the, that later part of the rainy season, it, it won't help. So, the new government, even change of government has not changed. Had not changed something. Right. Yeah. Um, are the farmers in your region organized? Are they in a cooperative? And could cooperatives strengthen the role of farmers? I know that Coapa Coco is very strong in your region, but are you yourself somewhere organized? Did you hear the question? Oh, yeah, 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 we are organized. Yeah, we are organized. Even in Abyssinia, we, we, we have a uh, society called as a family group of uh, farmers. It fortunately to discuss issues of cocoa farming. So uh, our problem is uh, uh, how the government can help us. You know, I have my register here. I I'm a leader of about 60 people right here. This is my register. Uh, we make contribution of uh, one city a month. Uh, chooses every month, uh, yeah. And this is the book, and I am a leader of a basketball Google group here in Abyssin. And also, okay, so I'm, I'm also a leader of a little group. Okay. And do do these groups help you to uh, to challenge the cocoa board to get things or to get fertilizers or pesticides uh, or? You, you, what is the aim of the you group? Will make, but it will not come anywhere. 
So what do you do? What's your aim for coming together? What do you want to achieve? And how do you do it? We found a group to help ourselves in case of to get people in here. Imagine he said that they are saying they make their input even through their situations, but then nothing is done about whatever grievances they present. Hello? Hello? Yeah, your last word or sentence. Yes. What they are saying is that, yeah, the associations, they come together and present their grievances. But, nothing. but they don't get any positive response. Their grievances are not made in spite of the fact that they present them collectively. Yeah, that's it. They try to work mm -hmm. with themselves and put pressure on authority, but nothing comes out of it. That's what the, the argument is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think do you think this could improve if more farmers get organized, if you have stronger farmer organizations? If if all farmers would be organized in, in strong organizations, could that improve your bargaining position? Joseph let me add to that before you answer the question. Yes. Let me add to what he just asked. Uh, when you look at in South America, okay. in some part you, of you can, it, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hello? Hello. If you could if you could repeat what he, he said to it will help. Uh, let me repeat what he said and add to it. He was asking, do you think that yeah. if the farmers come together in a bigger group? Uh, would they be able to put pressure on authorities to act upon their grievances? And I wanted to add to his question. I mean, uh, one of the problems that we have, actually, you just said it, we have many organizations and groups, but they are not strong enough. When you compare it to South America, I've done some studies on how groups are organized in South America, farming groups also, they are lots stronger. So what is the problem that uh, your group, for example, is so, I mean, very weak, unable to put pressure on government? <coughs> Have you heard me, the question? Yeah, yeah, we heard you. You know, uh, group, we demand only on the government, basically, what the government will help us, but it's not enough. So it can get something from elsewhere so that it can help the cocoa farmers. We can be able to prove our, uh, uh, how do you call it? Our cocoa. Uh, uh, the farm side. <laughs> we can be able to prove and get more yield during the harvest season. You are talking about maybe. If you have the yeah, bigger groups, would that help? Because maybe the smaller ones are not, they, they are not strong enough. But so if you are organized, larger groups, would that help? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, like, the larger we, we do the same because we, 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 we are, these groups are located in the cities uh, and the villages, yeah, and we come together sometime, yeah, uh, uh, one. Uh, in the region, in the not in the in the district, okay, the, uh, in the, in the district, district, yeah. So we are located in the villages, and uh, sometimes we meet together and discuss what we need in the earth, for what will help us in the cocoa farming, and nothing come out of it. Okay, are you aware of this Kuapa Cocoa Farmers Association? Kuapa. Yeah. Are you part of it, uh, the, this organization? Some of you? No, no, we are part of PBC. Ah, okay. It's a different organization. It's a different one. Yeah. private company. And sometimes, if you go to your and you go to the PBC, they will tell you there's no money. So if there's no money, I can't wait and die. So I will. It's safe to the uh, we are back. You know what, what I mean? It is not uh, always uh, dealing with one to go uh, uh, pick it up. 
Okay. And are there different uh, cocoa buyers in your region? Is it only PBC or are other companies also buying cocoa in your region? Like Olam or who else? We have another company in China. <laughs> we, have, uh, we, have buy, uh, we have one other company in China. There are four or five companies. And uh, Olam, like it, Olam, is an international. So, is it easier to get your money directly from them? Do, do they pay cash? The sometimes also they don't have money. It's always uh, on and off. Yeah. It's on and off. Not the uh, table. That if you have your cocoa beans, put it at cocoa shed, they wait and they give you money. Sometimes they will pay you right away. But sometimes they will credit. They will credit. And do you also have a problem that you don't trust the traders, so that they cheat you with the scales? Which I have heard often from, from Ghana, that they adjust their scales so that you deliver 65 yeah. kilo and they pay you 55? So the the manipulate the scales. I just know that it's in Ghana here. In Ghana. Yeah. The the purchasers, the cocoa uh, buyers here, yeah. in the village they adjust the scale, and we are not uh, lucky. They will take maybe five to ten kilos out of your cocoa bag. Uh, uh, your cocoa. Every one bag. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything against it. Do you have own? Scales or uh, you, you may complain, but you know the, the uh, officials at the top, yeah, they will say we will, we will come and see, we will come and, but they will not, they will, they will not show up. But I can propose one one solution. Probably I don't know whether it will work. For example, you have an organization, you have association. Yeah. You can also buy this through your contributions. Buy this case yourself, and so if they are coming to weigh, after they weigh, they all, you also use your own scales to 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 see whether what they have done is correct but or not. But, but you can't buy scales for ourselves. Why? But the buyer, you, you, you can't challenge it because if you uh, after the book go is you can't use it anymore. You at your home, so you have what you must do is to go and sell it. If you don't sell it, you don't have money and you can't keep it in the house. And if you have your scale, you put it at home and you take it one month about 62 or 62.5 uh, kilos. When you go there, it will come down to maybe 55 or 54 kilos. Don't read the one month that is 62.5 kilos. I think you get what I mean. I got what I mean, but um, why don't you challenge them? You just leave them like that. Uh, go again, please. Why don't you challenge them? Ah, uh, we are paid by the way. We, we, we challenge them, but nothing can happen. Nowhere. Nowhere. You see the relationship between them, uh, maybe they are superior and they think if they don't sell it, it will go bad or something. So, so it all comes to the issue of maybe weak organization. Mm -hmm. If it's well organized, they will have leaders probably who will go around and make sure that the, the right thing is done. Are there any organizations active who support you to empower your organization and to, to grow it? Like, I don't know, Solidaridad or uh, Fair Trade or somebody else? So, are there trainings on how to run a cooperative and how to improve uh, what the cooperative is doing? It's talking about other NGOs who try to help cocoa farmers so that they will. We may like that, but how? If you are able to help us, we will cooperate with you. But but now we don't have anything like that on the ground. In your place. One that is happening. 
any other organization that are helping families. No, the job, we have the job, John. We have the job. The job is an NGO. The job is an NGO. Yeah, what does it do? They, they say they have to turn. Let, let's let them tell us what they do. To turn that. So if you can briefly talk about to turn. Uh, to turn what they, what they normally do is that uh, uh, we didn't have it. They, they choose about, if you have about 15 or 30 on, on the family, they, and they work on their farms. And at the end of the season, they will bring you uh, some bonus. They say first they were giving us a uh, Volunteer moves, but they have not stopped. Okay. So, the so they are not happening. They are the agenda. They are the agenda. Trying to help push it so that you get. But this was. They are not doing that. But this was the company to Tom and not an NGO or. You see, we are just explaining. Uh, they are willing for. Uh, they are willing for uh, spray guns, but they don't do the work. With the big machines. It's a company. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a gang. So it means that there's nobody that is helping to push. Yeah, there's, no, there's nobody who is pushing the agenda. Uh, uh, so, what he, can I come in? What he's saying is that the company you just mentioned actually is a company. So, they have other interests of also earning money from you yeah. at the end. So, it's not an NGO just who just want to help you sell your cocoa products at yeah, yeah. a better price. Yeah, they have interest. They have also have interest. So now, uh, trying to say that if you can, you and you over there can help us, then we can uh, work together and uh, with a good result in the cocoa family. Yeah, so, uh, maybe you tell them what you are doing here in Europe. Well, um, the well, if 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 you buy a bar if you buy a bar of chocolate here in Germany, most people don't know that only a small amount of a price is for cocoa and goes to the cocoa farmer. And um, we work with NGOs here in uh, in uh, in Germany and uh, also other countries, so we have a network worldwide, and we try to pressure the companies to pay a better price for cocoa. We say that uh, they should pay a price where a family can can good can have a good life. You know, presently the cocoa price is sold by the world market. The price goes down, the price goes up, um, and the companies say they are not responsible for what is happening with, with the farmers. And we are trying to pressure the companies um, to say and say you are responsible for the well-being of farmers. You are responsible that farmers earn enough money to pay, for example, for, uh, for school fees or also to pay for laborers to give, if, if, if they need help that they don't need their children, you need to pay them enough for cocoa so that they can hire adult and that they can pay uh, wages which are so that people don't leave the cocoa region but try to stay and produce cocoa. So this is what we are discussing with, with uh, the companies and um, we have as a network we have campaigns um, against the companies saying you should pay more for cocoa you can't say that you have sustainable cocoa if you don't pay enough for the cocoa and um, so this is part of work of NGOs here in Germany and, and other countries um, especially now that uh, the Christmas season is coming and Christmas a lot of people buy chocolate there are campaigns in many European countries saying we have to pay enough for the farmers so that it's not only a nice chocolate for us but only a good income from cocoa um, additionally I'm in contact with um, organizations in, in Ghana for example we organized conferences here and invited people from, for example, Coapa Coco. 
We had uh, um, leading people of Coapa Coco on conferences here, also challenging the industry, you have to pay more for your cocoa. Um, so this is how we try to, co to connect our chocolate consumption with your cocoa production. For people in Germany, cocoa is far away from chocolate. They buy, they buy a chocolate in the supermarket and they don't think about farmers. And uh, for you, the chocolate is far away because uh, you produce the cocoa and um, one day it will be a chocolate here. And we try to connect these things. So we try to win those who are for human dignity, those Germans, that together we make pressure on the, on the companies that they are ready to pay a higher price. And then we make pressure on the politicians here that they make laws. Laws that can give you uh, more income. But we think you have to organize yourself to be able to strike. To tell them if you don't pay the right price, we don't give you our cocoa anymore. So you need associations that you have funds to be able to strike and you have to cooperate with the people in Cote d'Ivoire, in uh, Nigeria and Cameroon. If you come together from your farmers, you have really the chance to make a big pressure on the big companies. So it is necessary that you go ahead and unite with the other companies and try to find ways with Cote d'Ivoire because if you are only strong in one country, they will buy from the other countries. So the farmers have to come together uh, uh, to, 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 uh, that you can make a change. Are you all already going in this direction? Yes. There is also yes, some... Yes, you are right. Now, please, can you listen to me? Quite right. But we farmers over here in the villages, we can't do anything because, let me, excuse me to say, our leaders are not honest. They are not honest because what they're supposed to do for the farmers, they don't do it. It's not done. And uh, always they keep enjoying and we both are always suffering, 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 and later we die. <laughs> so what they're saying is not easy task. No, to uh, go to Cameroon uh, and uh, Nigeria and Côte uh, d'Ivoire, it, it, it is a lot of money, but we can't make it. So that's why we have our, they have to do this, this uh, work for we farmers so that we can produce good uh, cocoa beans. But if not, if I'm weak and I have uh, money, I, I, I don't have good health. I cannot go to hospital. If I'm sick, I just go to the drugstore and buy paracetamol for only 50 pesos. And the sickness will keep on going with me till somebody comes in or my family. If I don't have a family, that, that means I'm going to die. So it's not easy to ask what you're saying. It's a good idea, but we, how can we make it? Mm. There, there is a movement since three or four years of, of farmers on a global level to unite. They call themselves World Cocoa Farmers Organization. And um, I think Coapa Coco is, is a member of that. So they, they, uh, they try to, to, to organize uh, farmers worldwide to give them a voice. But um, it's, yeah, the problem is that many, many farmers uh, are not yet organized and they don't have strong organizations. And, um, no, you see, my, my farmers, I, I tell you, we are organized, but we, uh, 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 our arguments are not met, as you told earlier. You see, this farm inputs, we don't get. Uh, spray machines, the pesticide, you see, they keep on changing pesticide. You see, so all these problems are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I may come in, I, I think the point to make is that um, farmers have made a lot of effort to get um, government and authorities to um, hear them and to help them properly. But the, the problem is that, um, as they said, nothing has been done concretely uh, on the part of government. Um, we have the, between the farmer, that is the producer of cocoa, and then the farmer chocolate. It is very long. You have uh, private uh, buying companies that buy, and they don't intend to sell to 
the cocoa board, which sells to the international companies and uh, final the uh, final product of uh, it is produced. So, if pressure could be brought on government, I don't know if the cannot sell direct to cocoa board. If they did that, probably would end a lot uh, better than they are ending now. So probably uh, assistance will be needed in that direction so that pressure is brought to bear. So at least this chain is, is boosted so that the farmer can get good produce for uh, his cocoa beans. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the early, uh, in the sixties, there were no uh, 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 private companies. We have only Ghana Farmers Association. So we, uh, the, the farmers were selling to uh, the government, cocoa bulb. But later on, uh, there was uh, everything changed. Yeah, everything changed. It's pretty much uh, overthrowing the old companies, a lot of them politicians who were rich, they, they, they formed associations and they, 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 they were buying at the farmers instead of the farmers <laughs> selling to the, 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 the government. So this is See, another problem. So all this is uh, I'm not sure. So many people in between buying from one point to the other and at the end I mean the farmers end very little. So there's a window send directly to the cocoa about cocoa yeah, yeah. yeah, but how why it can't be organized? Why you don't speak to your politicians that they should organize that you can direct sell it to the cocoa board? Did, did you try it? Did you get a sale with them? They have already said it. They don't just think they are powerless. Just that I did serve. But at the time, if you if you do not want, at the time you say you say you go go to a go go board, there will be no money. But the private firm will have money. So what do you do as a as a poor person? What do you do as a poor firm? You go to go go board with your go go. There is no money, and then the private firm has got money. So the best thing to go is to sell it to a private firm. I compare to send it to a private firm. Mm -hmm. And the private firms are telling they give incentives. Why go go back to give me incentives? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a problem. The private firms have ready money. Yeah. The government. And they, uh, just, uh, this season, they started what we call the pollination. As a, uh, so many farmers didn't really enjoy. Only few people enjoy this pollination. They, they didn't trade so many people. And uh, uh, the rich, uh, the, the rich men who are in the Bobo farm and they have the uh, uh, opportunity and hire uh, uh, a car and put them in and they go and do the land pollination for them. So they can get more cocoa beans. But we poor farmer, if we are not able to uh, sponsor this thing, then you are left behind. Mm. So even the farming, there are some some who are very powerful. Oh, the uh, 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 this cocoa. So I think the we can be running up. They have lots so many people to do this pollination, mm. and then the spraying guys, they should increase the number. So okay. in the in the next Hello. year we will work with your region with black and white and we try to work and give you better answers what you can do and how we can support you yeah it's good we have heard now your problems now okay. we try to work on it and support you that you get a stronger voice yeah. Yeah? we can't promise yeah. that we will be successful but we try our best and to help you because normally okay. the world has a creed that everyone yeah, yeah. has a right to have human dignity. Yeah, yeah and this is our right and your right to live in dignity and we try to come forward to see what we can do. We are also a small association, yeah, but uh, uh, our reverend today has a lot of contacts, so we try to come forward and when we come next year to in March to your area, yeah, yeah, we should make a meeting yes, okay. and discuss how we have come forward and stay with Black and White or associations okay. in contact. Very dark. <laughs> <laughs>
Because Deutsch reden. Du warst in Deutschland, oh! Ja. Und immer noch Deutschland. Ja, ich war da ungefähr fünf Jahre. Fünf Jahre. Aha. Was, was hast du hier gemacht? Ja. Was hast du hier gemacht? Damals bin ich Asylantin. Okay. Asylantin. Okay. Du bist auch gekommen, weil, du, weil es schwer war in Ghana ja, zu überleben. Bist du nach Deutschland gekommen? Ja, yeah, you came to Germany because life was difficult in life Ghana. Life was difficult in Ghana, yeah? For you. Yeah, yeah. Very, very difficult. That's why. And, and I didn't know that I was going to seek political asylum. I knew that I wouldn't have come. I would have worked here, over here. But who knows? Nobody knows. You know, if as a young girl, now at that time I was 24 years. So I, I, I thought. Uh, something will be great somewhere so that I can travel. That's why I traveled to Germany. And uh, I learned a lot in Germany. Uh, not money, but uh, experience. experience. Right now, I've been to Japan for about seven years or so. Oh, I have a lot of experience. So if I'm doing something, I know what I'm about uh, to do it. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Wow. So we we'll recovery. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very much. It's a good experience to know. Good that you have taken your time yeah. uh, to help us a bit you to understand. Like to give a, a last word. Yeah. And give the, the last word. Yeah. And give the hope. Aquaba. <laughs> <laughs> the last word is hope. It says Aquaba. <laughs> <laughs> so, finish that. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Of course, uh, be in contact yes. with them. Anything, we'll get back to them. Especially when we come to yes. Ghana. Uh, and I've gotten to know their houses too. All right. But I've gotten to know their houses. I have their, I have their contact, so anytime. Uh, you know, we want to make interviews with people while they came to Germany. He can tell you, you can make an interview with him about his experience. Okay. Because it's very interesting. Okay. And maybe so they know... Here. They know others. Yeah, I'm interested in If they know others, young people who went to Germany, now maybe they know also some today who went. Yeah, I used to advise them. You know, when they contact me, uh, when the young boys are ready to travel, they contact me that they will travel. And I used to tell them, to be honest with you, is it very, very good to work over here in Ghana? Then to travel and go along somewhere. So, you know, some people go by foot on this uh, desert in yeah. Sahara and they lose, they lose their life every day. Come in the, on the Mediterranean, you see they are trapped and so on. So, I used to advise them, not here I'm talking, always I used to tell them, if it's hard working, make man. So, uh, why I said, when we knew that hard working makes money, we wouldn't have, I wouldn't have traveled to Germany. But now, right now, this morning, I, I use bicycle to go and water my uh, garden. It's about 25 kilometers before I reach here. So I know what I'm doing now, understand what I'm doing, so step by step, gradually, I, I will do something better. They need help. They need help. They need help. On the government, mm. as in, you know, they yeah. knew, but uh, the government would help. It shouldn't have gone at all. It would be nice if you join black and white in Ghana in the association, yeah, 
that we get more farmers and your knowledge inside and together we try to develop a concept concept for changing for change so that we can good cooperate that maybe we can support you that you really can give a life and dignity there and that we get more balance and more justice in the world Okay, thank you very much. I'm ready to do that. He said you're ready. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, we are ready. Okay. All right. Thank Have you nice very day. much. Bye. Okay, ciao. Bye bye. bye.